Here I've got this nice problem that was heavily inspired by a problem on the 1964 Putnam exam. So our goal is to determine all continuous functions from 0, 1 to 0 infinity, where we include both endpoints in both spots, and then real numbers c, such that the integral between 0 and 1 of f of x is c, the integral between 0 and 1 of x times f of x is c squared, and finally the integral between 0 and 1 of x squared f of x is c cubed. Okay, so let's maybe see how we can get started. We're going to get started with a fairly mundane equation, and that is 0 is the same thing as c cubed minus 2 times c cubed plus another c cubed. So that's pretty obvious because we've got c cubed plus c cubed is 2c cubed, then we're subtracting it off. But let's see how we could use that along with our givens down here. We'll notice that this is a c cubed right here, this integral from 0 to 1 of x squared f of x. So let's rewrite this as that integral. Integral 0 to 1 of x squared f of x dx. So that's the first appearance of c cubed. Now the second appearance of c cubed can be decomposed maybe into 2 times c times c squared. Then we can use the second integral. So let's see. This is going to be minus 2 times c times the integral from 0 up to 1 of x times f of x dx. So something like that. And then for this last one, we can do something similar. So we can take this c cubed and rewrite it as c times c squared, or maybe c squared times c. And then we have this is plus c squared, and then the integral between 0 and 1 of f of x dx, where I've replaced the c with that integral. But now let's push these integrals together and see what we get. So we'll have the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 2 times c times x plus c squared, and that's all multiplied by f of x dx. So again, that's just by pushing them together and then factoring the f of x out of the right-hand side. Then we can see that this guy right here factors pretty clearly as x minus c quantity squared times f of x dx. But now we're actually almost done if we look at the following observation. So our observation is that for all x on the interval 0, 1, that's the interval that we're integrating over, so that's all that we really need to consider. We have x minus c squared is bigger than or equal to 0. It could be 0 if c is on that interval, but likely it's never equal to 0. It's always non-negative because we have a square there. And then also we know that f of x is bigger than or equal to 0. And we know about that just by our defining property of our function over here that its codomain is non-negative real numbers. But now this means their product is also non-negative. So that means we're integrating a non-negative function, namely their product, and ending up with the number 0. But that tells us that the function that we're integrating must be the zero function. So we have x minus c quantity squared times f of x is equal to zero for all x on the interval 0, 1. That's the only way that we can achieve a value of zero for this integral. But let's notice that x minus c is only zero at the point c. But if this is always zero at the point c, but this product is 0 for all x between 0 and 1, that means our function f of x is in fact equal to the 0 function. So in other words, f of x is equal to 0 for all x between 0 and 1. But now that we have that, we can easily use that in conjunction with this first equation to see that the number c is also equal to 0. And that's actually our full classification of 
all possible functions and all possible real numbers. We can only have the zero function and we can only have the real number zero. So that's kind of a little bit of a letdown, but to be honest, we've got fairly strict conditions over here that we need to satisfy. So it's not surprising that only a really trivial result makes these conditions over here satisfied. And that's a good place to stop.